Sound check. This is not the first round or the last round, it's the final round. Last February 12th on DAZN, former middleweight champion Danny Jacobs lost a split decision to John Ryder. I thought Jacobs may have pulled it out, but in Jacobs' last few fights, he's looked uninspired. It doesn't appear that he has that spark, that fire that made him a champion. Saturday, February 19th, it's a grudge match at welterweight. Former 140-pound champ Amir Khan takes on former welterweight champ Kel Brook. In the UK, it's sold out in 10 minutes. It's a big-time grudge match over there. And let's be honest, this is boxing. Anything goes. If one of them looks good in this fight, it could lead to a bigger fight down the road. If you think that's crazy, in 1997, Hector Camacho was 34 years old. He fought a comebacking Sugar Ray Leonard who was 40. Camacho ended up knocking my idol out. He parlayed that into a welterweight title fight against Oscar De La Hoya. So you never know in boxing, anything goes. Huh? And folks, I've got to hurry up because my daughter is getting ready to vacuum the floor. She's told me that my time is limited. Also on February 19th on DAZN, former 154-pound champ Jaime Munguia faces off with Demetrius Ballard. They're both unbeaten. Munguia is 38-0 with 30 knockouts. One thing to watch here, Munguia almost passed out after the weigh-in, so we'll see if it affects him in the fight. In news outside the ring, last week, middleweight champ Jamal Charlo was arrested. There have been rumors he's in the running for a possible Canelo fight, but when does an arrest stop fighters from getting fights? It didn't stop Sergey Kovalev from getting the Canelo fight a few years ago. Junior middleweight champ Jermel Charlo was supposed to face off with Brian Castaño. It's a rematch of their fight last summer. It was going to decide supremacy at 154 pounds. Castaño got hurt and the fight is postponed. I've been talking about April 30th. That's the date that Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano face off in Madison Square Garden for Taylor's lightweight belts. As a fight fan, that date just got better. This week it was made official. Oscar Valdez and Shakur Stevenson have a unification fight at 130 pounds. And I'm backing Shakur all the way. I'm from Jersey. He's from Jersey. I think Shakur Stevenson is going to put on a show. And speaking of that Taylor Serrano fight in MSG, I got my tickets. I can't wait to be there. And I'd love to celebrate this rich history of boxing. February 15th, it was 44 years since Muhammad Ali and Leon Spinks had their first fight, which was one of the biggest upsets in sports history. Spinks only had seven professional fights going into that night, but Spinks out-hustled and out-fought Ali over 15 rounds to become the new heavyweight champion of the world. For Spinks, that was the high point of his career. Ali came back a few months later to win their rematch to become the first three-time heavyweight champion. Spinks was never able to recapture that glory in the ring, and he passed away a year ago. But that one night in 1978, he shocked the world and became a champ. February 19th marked 22 years since Eric Morales and Marco Antonio Barrera had their first fight on HBO was on Boxing After Dark. It was one of the best fights of the year. It was back and forth action all 12 rounds. Morales ended up winning a split decision, but what that began was one of boxing's best trilogies ever. Barrera ended up winning the second and the third fights, but it was the boxing fans who won thanks to these great fighters and the great trilogy that they put on. That's the bell. That's it. That is the final round.